Hello and welcome to another full review. Let's go through another week's worth of data, starting with how large is your Gwent collection? This is me getting into the minds of the player base, just kind of seeing where we're at in terms of collecting. And it's really interesting. Over a third of players have everything. Or you have every card that I meant to say, pretty much have every card or complete collection, like they're done, right? If you have pretty much every card, you have all the cards you're looking for. And it's also important to know the following. Once you hit he this range, you're already kind of set. Once you have everything for a faction, you're always going to have a relevant meta deck. You're probably pretty satisfied, especially two or three where you get to play your favorite decks. The result is actually not a lot of players to sell kegs to. Most people are content, and once you get your favorite faction done, you're more likely to want to grind out the rest. Let's see. Over a third of players playing Gwent forever since Gwent's not growing a lot. It's not necessarily true, Brominator. It depends on what your retention rate is from the initial players. You could technically triple your player base and have still over uh, roughly this amount of statistics. Or additionally, how fast can you get all the cards just by grinding or how many people pay? These are questions that make it so that might be the case. Uh, Mange Sukiyomi, welcome back. How are you? How are you? So there is, there's more to it than that. I wouldn't say this necessarily means that the player base isn't growing. I think this just means player base is very good at getting all the cards. Now, many of them, are, we, I've done some polls on when players were here. Now, about a third of players have been playing for a very long time, for several years now. There is some truth to that, but I also don't know what the burn rate on players is. How sticky is Gwent? Going to the top comments here, let's see. Mostly missing a bunch of forgotten neutral legendaries and a couple power crep faction legendaries. I think this is like a good example. New stuff, I'm assuming power crep for our faction legend. Oh no, like power crept out of the meta. This is a good example though of, hey, they, there's a point where you say, you know what? I really don't need Dandelion Vainglory. Let's see, got all the cards since, uh, since the beta, the relaunch happened, everything was at zero, 240k scraps. I had the same kind of deal myself. I had a lot of scraps left over. Haven't had to put much money into the game to get all the cards, unless you grinded. I've got everything and I feel empty inside. That's kind of the paradox. The, once the grind's gone for getting new content, but you know, sometimes that, that can kill the motivation for people. But on the alternative, you can set up a grind that doesn't involve grinding for new cards. Could be interesting, could be interesting. Next question. Do you want the old journeys to return? I got inspired from a Reddit post on this one. Somebody's like made this poll on Reddit and it was so biased. Basically, this person's like, bring back the old journeys here's five options four of them say bring back the old journeys and one of them's like maybe maybe we shouldn't bring them back let's see saw the poll uh regarding expansions from a city bear staff well it was a link to a google doc really city bear staff how about actually hook me up with that i'm curious i haven't got that in this video tell me about that city bear polling reddit that'd be interesting anyways the answer was here. I thought it was really interesting. I made sure it was really, I phrased it in the obvious opportunity. No, yes, and kind of. No says prioritize the other stuff, like new journeys, new leaders, new, and new anything. Kind of bring back the base character models, but new cosmetics. And then yes, bring back the exact ones you missed. So this is like, this would appeal to people who are coming in late. They have a skin or something they want from the previous journey that never got a chance to get. Here, bring them back. Kind of saying, look, build upon what you've done or new. Let's get new leaders. Let's get Vilga for it. Let me get, me, get me some Regis or get me other stuff. And the answer is most people want new stuff. Nearly, uh, basically 75% of the player base wants new stuff. So I think moving on is going to be the winner here. Like if we were to see if CDVR is watching this, move on. People want new stuff. They do not mind though, re-offering the Yennefer model and saying we got all new outfits for her, cards, keys. Like you can make a new journey for her using the same model. I really like that. It'd be great if we could get what we paid for, finish the old journeys. I have no idea what the data says on that. And unfortunately, I can't pull the community on that because Brominator, yes, would the community like that? 100%. Would it decrease play rate because people don't feel the urgency to grind out the journey? I don't know. That's the part I don't know. And then we, there's the first content, our comment from Jaja, Jaja Binks. I wish they, they would let you decide to start a new journey or continue the old one you missed or didn't finish. Yep. Let's see. As a loyal book fan, and I think I commented on it. Everyone wants that. I don't know what it would do to play rates in the game. Then the second one, as a loyal book fan, I really, wanted, I really, really want Yennefer skin. Love her character so much, but I joined this game too late. Exactly, right? This is where I think kind of is going to ultimately win. 
this will, I think, be the future. Once they feel like they have enough base models, they'll revisit Yennefer, Geralt, and Triss, and Ciri, because these are characters people want to play if they join a year from now, two years from now, and Gwent. Nobody wants to sit there and be like, oh, yeah, I read just what I read the Witcher books, finished up the Witcher season four. There's a new short story book out. They decided to revisit the world. Maybe use the ghost author. I don't know. It doesn't matter, right? They, they're going to want the main characters. They're going to have to bring them back eventually. Next one. Have you spent money on getting cards from Once Upon a Pyre? This is where I start to change pretty much all of my polls. I start getting really obsessed with the idea of money in Gwent. I start getting really curious about it. You're going to start to see me trend in here. So this was my first thing. They tried the Once Upon a Pyre expansion packs, our pass, and the packs, where you could just, for like, five, seven bucks, you could buy, get all the new cards, premium, for any particular faction, for that, like, two-month set. Or you can spend, like, the 50-something dollars, get everything for the entire six months. Coming up to about 10 bucks a month, kind of like a journey. A little bit more expensive because the journey is usually like two months where in this case this would be a ten dollars a month so about twice twice expensive something like that something like that you guys know what i mean what's really interesting here is most people said no right and this goes back way over here where most players aren't missing all the cards or and that kind of makes sense right if only 22 percent of people are spending money on the once upon a buyer stuff we're getting down to the missing card group and also, I have all the important cards for one faction. Like, mo the further you go down here, the less likely I think you are to spend money on the game. You have what you need. Now, if you are missing cards, it kind of hints that, yeah, you're, you're willing to spend some money on cards. Willing to spend some money on cards if you are missing cards. Check in the comments. Catch them with the chat. My logic, if it's a good game, I'll pay for support. Yeah, and I, I've also paid. I bought a journey. and I've bought cards before. That is no secret. Let's see here. I had a full collection during Co's beta, and I've been living on scraps from that ever since. Amen. Plus, still have 200k, so I doubt I'll ever need to buy. Never. I'll no doubt I'll need to buy cards ever. I just buy the journeys and occasionally open cosmetics to support the pro scene. That's interesting to me, right? This is where I start to get more and more interested. Because this person's done. They have all the cards. They don't really care about the kegs. They probably don't care too much about the premium collection because they have access to everything. Bashalika of the tier one sub. Bashalika, thank you for the support. I appreciate it. Thank you for helping me make this possible and I'll keep the content coming. Good to see you here as well. Welcome back. Mm -mm -mm, that's awesome. We're in the middle of a poll review, but you might already know that. Moving along here. Thanks again, Bashalika. Moving along here. What up? Nothing much. How are you? Checking this. Spend money on cards from what's going up higher. The other one is after missing max level on Siri Journey. I've bought the Unlock Premium Journey Advanced 25 level things for the last three or four journeys. By doing the journey and daily quest, I rocked myself the 82k gold and 30k scraft. And just crafted the VOB. Okay, pause. I don't even like... We can keep going for this one, but think of how interesting this is. Basically, this person getting the cosmetics and stuff, they're willing to pay for the 25 level advance. I will also of note say, because of David here purchasing this, it is less likely they'll ever let players actually keep their journey every beyond two months and you actually see them moving in that direction as well if we go back to the game really fast back in and in go to the journey you guys see something oh no i can't show it to you because i wiped to the journey you could pay the hop levels in the journey now which is pretty new meaning if people are willing to continue to pay for the plus 25 level skip or near the end if they're short two levels pay four extra dollars to get the levels they're going to miss you're never going to see cdpr let you keep the journey 100%. 100%. Sweet. Moving along. Uh, warned everybody I'm cutting back. I'm a little burnt out. And I did cut back a little bit. So be it. Thank you guys for understanding. A lot of likes there. A lot of support. Love all of you. Grinch Mord going well. We're doing a poll review for the week. Just looking at the data from the CDPR, or from the Gwent community that I was able to gather. And so uh, I'm glad to see you. Glad to see you. All right, next. What should you value more in a Gwent patch? I think this is really important. Most people care. This one sh so shocked me. I thought it'd be the exact opposite. Even in right now, the current meta, where every faction has one or two decks which are way ahead of everything else, just stifling a little bit of creativity, a lot of creativity. What am I saying? Stifling a lot of creativity and what you can really do with Gwen cards right now. Like Line Pockets will slaughter most decks. Spell Squaretel will slaughter most decks. Wild Hunt Frost will slaughter most decks. Um, and you just kind of you start running through them. You start saying, wow, this is like. Kind of impressive. It's hard. Right now, I can tell you as a creative deck builder, it is hard to play this game. 
What's interesting is people actually lean towards buffing forgotten archetypes more than trying to keep pushing the power level down. And that is really interesting to me. Going to the top comments here. I'd say the nerfs are more important because it doesn't matter that the buff forgotten archetypes, unless they buff them to broken levels, they won't be played if the strong decks remain strong. That's the exact opposite of this, right? Most people want to buff forgotten archetypes. Let's see. First deck I built, Sob Blood, number of times it's been remotely viable, zero. I think this might be more the mentality. People want the forgotten stuff to see play. And so they're not sitting there saying, wow, the, the strong decks are really pushing it down. I think actually Arrival of the Green Goat it hits it on the head of, I have a deck I really like. And it has never been viable. So if they, even if they put out new cards in the current expansion that are equal power level of the other existing tier one stuff and tier two stuff, my archetype still not going to see play. So... I think this is where people are forgetting. Like, I, this is fascinating to me. Fascinating to me. It basically says, look, people, you know, everyone's like, oh, they're, they're barely making meaningful changes on, like, these patches. The nerfs are there. I just wonder what would it look like if Harold Gord and Tunnel Drill had taken a hit this last patch. Would it have been this huge surge of creativity? Because we saw Wild Frost, or Wild Hunt Frost, make it as a really solid contender in the meta right now. So it's interesting. AK Vampires? Yeah, Hollaback J. I think you hit it on the head there. Vampires has never really been competitive. People like vampires, though. John Doe, I don't know if you're in the chat. You love vampires. So when you see nerfing the strong decks, it's like, oh, everything could be about the same power level it's always been. And my vampires archetype will never see play. And I think that's so interesting. I think that's so interesting. Why not both? Yes, Bubble Chub. I think you're correct. I think the answer will always be both. But in terms of priorities, I do not blame CDPR for dumping out 25 buffs and like three nerfs, right? So for me, that's my takeaway here. That CDPR, if you're gonna put more effort into one thing, buff like a fiend, as opposed to, to try to hopefully help people out, as opposed to nerfing the stronger decks. Do some of this, obviously, but if you're gonna fix the meta, focus on this. Anyways, catch it up, orbs need to be epic. Oh, that's a quick fix, Obsidian one now, isn't it? Make it gold. They, or make it, just make it the full, first gold rare. That works as well, Obsidian 1. There's no hard, fast rule that epic cards can't be bronze and vice versa. So I think, I think epic's always being gold, but rares, I think, can be gold. I don't think anyone would mind. Let's see. Catching up with the chat. Gord must be like in Slave Leader. What do you mean, Obsidian 1? It's the exact same thing. You pretty much only run spells with him anyways. I think the ST deck spell decks also run mostly spells too. Catching on up with the chat here. Prominator about the journeys earlier, but there's no incentive to buy journeys later in their life since you have no chance to finish them. Correct. Kind of Brominator, but I imagine that the vast majority of journey sales happen like day one. And I think they must have concluded that if you buy it later in life, well, you still have access to all the quests. You just have to grind a bit and you can spend a bit more money. But I imagine that it's the regular. Pe I don't think the journeys are luring people into the game Brominator. I imagine they're just rewarding existing players. Let's see. Louie. Do you think it's a good idea to bring back Geralt, Yen, Siri cosmetics for free? No. However, you have to do tasks complete and earn them. No. Make a new reward to earn an avatar, play them. Yes. I think you can give them, I think you can make rewards and quests for like the little icon thing. I do not think if you want to monetize Gwent, you want to make Geralt, Yen, Siri, and Triss models for free. I think that is the future of monetization given how, how many players already have complete collections here. That is my opinion. I think you want to bring them back to buy. I think you absolutely need to bring them back. And I'm surprised they're not just selling the base models for 10 bucks a piece in the store. But yeah, I don't think you ever give everything away for free there. Because you know that's what people want to buy. Isn't it, let's see, isn't it better to use CPR small resource and nerf the stronger cards because that's less work? But that doesn't solve the real problem here, Android subculture, right? As Hollaback J pointed out, if I want to play Vampires as a com competitive, viable deck, you know how many times it's existed in Gwent's history? Best of my knowledge, a solid zero. Maybe there was one time, but no, definitely not in the past, uh, not since I picked it up back last September or uh, December. So it's nearly what, nine, 10 months, roughly. Therefore, I do not think they will. I think this is needs to be key. So when they're buffing Deathwish and they're making Desert Banshee more viable, they're making Crow Clan Preacher more viable, they're trying to say, you know what, Druids, Deathwish, they haven't really been great in meta for a long, long time. Let's give them love. Let's give them love. Gord nerf four special for one point boost. Uh, maybe, maybe every two specials. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. 
Gord, Gord, Gord's starting to look a little risky. I think the more I play against the deck, the more I'm starting to notice that that or Orb is going to take a serious nerf. Then nerfing Orb to 7, honestly, would break that whole deck pretty fast. Or Elven's here to 6. Or Whisperer to like 17. What am I in 17? Whisperer, Whisperer. I didn't think she was as big a problem initially. Now, now I've, I've changed my mind. She's a huge problem. Catching up with chat. Let's see. I agree with me on. Do you have a YouTube add-on that gives you statistics on users and videos? Yes, I do. I do indeed. Um, let's keep moving down, but I can, I can show you it afterwards. Show you it afterwards. Free kill. Not many archetypes are far from being good. So that, or some archetypes are broken. Free kill? That's the exact problem, though. And so you have two ways to fix it. But if they added new cards and so, like this, this is a lot of archetypes have never really been viable. You have to buff to solve those. That's the issue here. That is the issue here, free kill. And I think that's what's motivating this vote, and it caught me off guard. Don't, I'm just trying to sell you guys what I see. I was expecting it to be the exact opposite on this poll. But the people have spoken, and the people say, look, we have a bunch of decks that we like, that we want to be stronger, and they, will, they are not strong based on the current power level the game has been set at for the past nine months. So, gotta give more love here. And I think CDPR is actually very close. We look at the patch patch. Let me, let me, let me actually pull up that patch really fast. Like when... Yeah, that could be why. And I think that's why. I think it's why. I'm a, I, was, I was expecting the exact same thing you guys are talking about. But if we look here, this, all of these buffs. Weather buff. Dragon's buff. Dragon's dream buff. Huge uh, Trisp buff for hand buff, right? Shoot buff. Brings back Rodea too. Dragon buff. Uh, Witcher buff. Notice Vivian's never really seen play, getting some love. Dwarf buff. Notice everything is that it's getting buffed here is usually pushing ruin the huge buff. Uh, Cranthier was a nerf to try to stop relics because relics prior to this meta was crushing everyone. That De our death wish and vi buff, which vi vi is still the worst design card in Gwent. That has not changed. It's really bad. Got you got a bunch of nerfs here, and this is when they get the, this is the most nerf heavy they've been since they've kind of been playing of how they patched the game. Uh, ner one nerf, two nerfs, three nerfs. Where are you? Four nerfs, five nerfs targeted at tier one. Then they get snuck by. I don't think they're going to do it again. They're showing that they're willing to be more willing. They're, CDVR is telling the world that they're willing to be more nerf heavy. But still, warrior buff, warrior buff, warrior buff. Or even like a uh, also shoot buff indirectly. Now, you know, six for four is always a good thing to have in a shoot deck. Druid buff, ice buff, bloodthirst buff helps patch Saddle Fury as well. Hey, Cohen's all of a sudden more viable. Maybe Witcher buff, Drog gets a huge buff, getting back to the reverence. Look at all of these random archetypes getting buffed here. All of them getting buffed. Jaxi, good to see you here. I think this is way more in line with what people are looking for. If they just need a few more nerfs. If they had smacked Syndicate down hard and Scoyatel didn't turn out to be quite as unhinged as it is, the meta would feel much better. The meta would feel much better, I think. Because honestly, like, I don't really mind Hyperthin that much as a deck archetype. Do I think TA needs a buff? Daunt card? I think it's tough because it, TA is such a boring card. Because, yeah, I mean, it could. I, I, think, I think it's fine to buff it. I wonder if it'll make the game more volatile. It's definitely weaker than something like Jin because the taller you go, the worse something is usually because you're more vulnerable to removal. With that said, I wonder what six would do, right? Because six would be the highest amount of points you can generate off of any single stratagem just as a, a normal thing about kicker right like your shield from engineering plans or whatever it's called can get you more value than just six by blocking like a four damage card or your lock from collar can net you seven points by shutting down a good ability but for guaranteed six it's good but you're so vulnerable because the moment you use it if they smack you with a heat wave it's gonna really sting always been the weakness of that card I think, uh, yeah, I probably could go to six or like five in vitality one or five. Give a random unit vitality, something like that. That might be too weird, though. Might be too weird. I just feel like it's re if you go six, you start making the game a little bit more. Do they have tower removal in their hand? But I guess it's already been like that. Yeah, I could probably go to six. Eh, it's also probably fine at five as well. It's, I think it's a lower priority. I think it's a lower priority. Good question, though. Good question, though. Has been a buff to old cards made a big impact on the meta. Desert Banshee, new cards. Well, looking at this, in terms of this past patch, not overly, but a good example of a re buff that did change a huge faction that people had forgotten about. I gotta go patch 
I don't know if you guys remember this one, but in the exact same thing. Was it here, guys? Was it here? Nerf, nerf. I mean, one buff is Royal Decree. Royal Decree is much more pan. This is 9.2. Royal Decree got a huge lot of love. Koshi got a lot of love. No, it's when they nerfed Koshi. It was the one patch prior when they buffed, um, when they changed Larva. Let's see, where are you? Where are you? Was it not this patch? The patch where they gave Yennefer and Triss from 9 to 8 provision was a big deal. Was a big deal. No, it must have been the patch before this one. 9.1, I think, is where Triss and Yen got the buff. That was really good. Helped a lot. Carrying on here. Carrying on to the next poll. How often should new cards be added? I need to redo this poll. I didn't think it would be quite like this, to be honest. I would have, if I thought it was going to be so polar, like nobody cared about once a year that little, then I would have done six month plus and added a four month option. But I think it's interesting. You see a bell curve. I will imagine if I'm a betting person, you add four months, it just becomes more of a bell curve. But this one needs to be redone. I'm not going to spend too much time, but I'll read top comments, of course. See where they got. See where we're at here. We do our poll review. Every, I prefer reworking old bad cards, quite a lot of them. And then, let's see. Uh, I'm gonna, let's see, next one. Never cared about that as much as I was waiting for bounce. New cards, always super fun. Enjoy it, but not as much in long forgotten archetypes are getting ignored. That's interesting. I think it shows how important it is to, I think I like this comment a lot. It shows how important it is to make sure new cards don't accidentally shove down all the other archetypes because people have strong attachments to them. So like the current meta is dreadful. I know like Lionheart has been really, Lionheart has a bunch of reasons why he doesn't like it, but I think one of them is, I think it goes for a lot of creators is the current top tier decks murder every creative deck and it's not close. They're just so pushed with new cards. That it just doesn't matter, right? It just doesn't matter. So I think in the long run, gotta be very careful about making sure the forgotten archetypes really can keep up and the new old or forgotten archetypes enter the meta. Like I would like a meta for one month where vampires is OP. I think players would like that. Or some other stuff is OP. Cause at least in the after that month, smash uh, like after the month, smack it down and make it much more balanced. But I'd rather over buff forgotten ar archetypes like wild hunt right now is a good example. I might hate playing against it, but if they fix it next patch or help buff everything else to Keep it up and let me have a bit more of a fighting chance. I'll be quite fine with it. But yeah, bull needs to be redone. But two to three months, like the or more frequent stuff seems to be dominating. Even four months. I think four months would be really interesting to see how this all splits. But six months is definitely too long. People want more frequent content. Meme tournament, if you've not signed up, hurry up. Won't spend time there. But people are really excited about it. We have over 50 people as of posting this. Almost 60. Have you ever spent money on Gwent? Yes, 75% of people have spent money on Gwent. So despite being very generous, most people, most people shell out the money. Shelling out the money, guys. So the amount of entertainment I had from that free game is only fair. Nearly as good as the 20, uh, nearly as good a return as the $20 download of Witcher 3 on PS4. Yeah, people are willing to pay if the game is good. Next comment. Hey, it's Fran Devane, who might actually be in the chat right now. I don't, I don't actually, maybe not. Let's see. Only journey and some boards really like. Never premium kegs or MP because it's too expensive for the little amount. The so cosmetic focus. Cosmetic focus. I respect that. Alpha beta, omega beta. What happens if gift subs and everyone chat is subscribed? They'll start giving gift subs to people who frequent the chat who might not be here. So it'll start spreading out. And you'll get some interesting names who might be lurkers or people jet uh, stop by. Free, yeah, just like basically it goes to net people who are next most active outside of it. That's how that works. Alpha beta omega. Give me a moment. We'll keep going. Do I not have... I do have stream live alerts here. Sweet. So this is where I got more interested in this. This is like really where I got curious. Because what about pre-ordering kegs or keg kegs in general? It turns out most people who spend like... A, there's a good chunk of people who spend money on the game. But of these people... Again, the, the different sample sizes might not be the same people participating. A lot of them don't actually spend money on kegs, period. Or keg-focused products. They spend things on uh, cosmetics. It's cosmetics. You see some pre-order packs here. Hardbacks. Notice this. I think this one's an interesting comment. Mini story expansion like Thronebreaker narrative. Maybe willing to pay. It's true. Thronebreaker is really good. But this comment I think really stands out to me. But they did buy some ca or packs from Syndicate Iron Judgment. And they regret not playing before Crimson Curse. Because of the card back. Not the cards. The card back is what Funny Didn't Laugh wants. 
wanted back then. That's really interesting. People really like cosmetics. Thus, we get to this question, which I was really curious about. Is if you spent money on card kegs, and this is probably something I'm going to have to look for next week because I just posted it three hours ago. What happens if you uh, go out of your way? Like, well, how much? Or now go out of your way. But if you spend money on kegs, how much do you spend, right? Because journeys, you're really only going to spend somewhere between 10 or $15 per journey, most likely. So in this case, though, we see... Hey, there is a group of players who have spent over $100 on kegs. Also, I've spent over $100 on kegs. I think it's put two rounds of $70 into the Gwent and got all the kegs over the course of its entire existence. Put 70 bucks in it and closed beta. And I think, no, maybe it was like 55 when I got back. And that got me everything effectively with all the beta scrap, or beta scraps and all that fun jazz. I think it's really interesting. It catches my eye and we won't go into that too much here. Catch up with the chat. Final comments. Any, anything you guys want to chime in here before we wrap up the poll review? How about full premium? Well, Chad, welcome to the chat. Uh, I, do, would, I don't think many people have full premium. Even I don't have full premium. Very few people prioritize it, from what I can tell. But I also don't know if people spend money on meteorite powder. I think I should eventually ask something about that. But I think it's my... Given that not everyone has full collections, I feel like that takes priority over making them pretty. Or you do it via cosmetics. All right, let's see. Don or Dan spent 150 euros on beta kegs and 20 on journeys. I feel that similar, similar, similar to me, similar to me. Uh, let's see. Doombreaker zero bucks. On Android sub calls, you think Gwen should focus on selling cosmetics instead of card kegs? And that is what I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to make a whole video on it. That is why I'm starting to add, like I've got about halfway through the week. I forget which question. I think it was this one where I started getting curious about money and then I just started going down the rabbit hole. And that's what I'm trying to determine because there is, there is a world where you just say Gwen's going to be free to play. We're going to focus on making the premium cards chaseable and making them even cooler with alt arts potentially like super rare versions. Where Geralt of Rivia, instead of it being like, you have Geralt of Rivia, then you have Geralt of Rivia kind of slash and a sword, the premium version that we all know. And then you could have a Geralt of Rivia in a suit at a party as an alternate art worth chasing. And that would be really interesting to me. Put all your money into art. And a game that does a really good job of this right now is Magic the Gathering. Magic the Gathering has like a million different arts for everything. Um, what's a good way to show you that? Hold on, maybe I'll show you. Uh, MTG Goldfish. Popping over. Okay, so this is a new Magic the Gathering set coming out. Let's see. And what Magic the Gathering's figured out, can I bring up, uh, here we go, here we go, here we go. So like you look at all these, it's like the normal Magic the Gathering card design. Nothing too special here, just, just how Magic the Gathering looks. They have all their values because they're a printed product. But if I scroll way down, here we go. We got promo cards. Look at these alt arts, different frames. That's really popular. Got you have the extended art versions. It's kind of like the they have full and they have foils. Now you have extended art versions of cards where they're extra zoomed in. You can see the art a little bit better. There are even more here. Let's see. And check out these alt frames. They're beautiful. Magic the Gathering has figured out that if you make a million different versions of cards, you can sell them, even if they do the same thing mechanically, right? Look at these beautiful, beautiful black and white frames to try to get that horror vibe. It's a horror world that they're currently in in Magic the Gathering. Getting these beautiful black and white frames. And look how different it is, right? You, if you want to spend money on the game, you can spend it on individual cards, but then you want to think about what does the card look like? Does it meet what I'm looking for? Do I want more of this black and white nitty gritty pencil or pencil drawing? Do I want this like beautified frame? Or do I want that classic Magic the Gathering feel? On top of, do I want the cards foil or not? Yep, don't they sell regular cards too? Yep, this is the main set. These are all the cards. They've just done alternate versions, like they're normal mountains and then they're black and white mountains. And it's, it's beautiful. It's actually really fascinating. So only reason I bring that up is I think I'm, uh, the reason I'm asking all these questions is I'm kind of curious, is there a world where Ma Gwent takes a lesson from Magic the Gathering and goes really rogue where they say, you know what? We are going to reduce the, the difficulty of getting cards in this game to nearly zero or make it all free or just keep a little bit of a grind and then go all in on the cosmetics, journeys, alternate arts, go, hit, go to town. 
Uh, knowing your Gwent when it comes to art, I think Magic the Gathering when it comes to art is actually ahead on Gwent. You might like Gwent's art better, but I think Gwent could learn from Magic the Gathering with the alt arts. I would like alt arts for a lot of the cards in the game. But overall, what are your thoughts, everybody? You can let me know down below, and I'll see you on the next poll review. Shout out to McRandar, pseudonym81, and Ahmed Ali for all their generous support on Patreon. Thank you all so much.